All right, this is section 2.4, the chain rule continued from yesterday. We talked about all of this yesterday. I just want to get to, I guess, what would be page three in my notes to go through just a few more examples for you. And, and then I'm going to let you guys have some work time. So f of x is equal to the square root of, what did you say? Is equal to the square root of 1 over x squared minus 6. And we need to find the derivative. So get that problem down first. <laughs> I feel like I'm at home at our dinner table right now because my daughter, this cute, sweet little six-year-old girl, you think she would not do things like that, but they are fascinated with Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, f of x is equal to the square root of 1 over x squared minus 6. So a couple things that we need to do. We just, really what you need to do here is just clean it up a little bit. Clean it up. Make it look nicer, turn it into a chain rule problem. So what does the square root mean? Mm -hmm. um, half, power. half power. And then I also want to mention that this could, you could also take what's in the denominator here and move it to the top. But remember, this right here, there's only one of them. So right now, it's kind of like it's put to the first power. Mm -hmm. So if I move it to the top, it becomes a negative, negative 1 power. So I am going to rewrite this as x squared minus 6 to the negative 1 power, but then I also have to put it to the what power? One one half. Half. To the 1 half power. Very good. So I'm going to add an extra set of parentheses, and I'm going to raise that to the 1 half power. So now what I'm going to do is take you guys back to, maybe maybe we talked about this yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Did we did? Yeah. <laughs> What do you do with those two? Multiply them, get x to the ten. So in this case, what we really have is x squared minus six to the power of negative one half. The hard part's over. Now it's just a matter of applying the chain rule. So you find what's put to a power. What's put to a power? X squared minus six. X Find the derivative right away. What is the derivative of x squared minus 6? <laughs> it's 2x. Write that down right now. Now I'm just going to rewrite f of x. And I'm going to rewrite f of x as being, instead of x squared minus 6, I'm going to call it u to the negative 1 half power. And according to the chain rule, you take the derivative of u to the negative 1 half power. What is the derivative of u to the negative one half power? Negative three. Negative one half u to the power of negative three halves. Negative three halves. Very nice. And then we have to multiply that by the derivative, the derivative of u. And just because I'm just fearful that I might run out of room, I'm going to keep playing here in the right. So I have negative one over two. That is a negative. Negative one half, this power, minus one, it's got me negative three half. So I have negative <coughs> one over two. Uh, I'm going to replace u with x squared minus six. And that is going to be put to the negative three over two power. And then that has to be multiplied by the derivative of u, which is 2x. Which is Which is equal to. All right, now what we're going to do is multiply negative 1 half times 2x, and that is going to get you negative x. And then we have to multiply that by x squared minus 6 to the negative 3 over 2 power. We're almost done. One extra step. Take this part right here. Move it to the bottom and make it positive. So we're going to have a negative x on the top, and then we're going to have a negative 
And then on the bottom, we have x squared minus 6 <coughs> to the <coughs> positive 3 half power. Is it okay if you do what? Is it okay if you do what? The other one? What do you mean the other one? Sorry? Then I put 2x divided by 1 minus 6. Well, you're multiplying. You're multiplying those two. We only did the cross multiply thing if we were adding them. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. So, do we have it? Or is it negative 1 and is if you wrote it as negative x over 1. So I guess if you wanted to, you could write negative x over 1 divided by that whole thing, but that seems very awkward to me. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think the one we had before it was 8 thirds x to the power of 3, mm -hmm. and then there was a negative exponent next to that, and so we moved that next to the, the 3. But this was not already a fraction, so I certainly wouldn't create a fraction if there isn't a fraction yet. Okay. All right. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay, that's so really the goal of that problem was really just to talk to you about changing square roots and changing things from the bottom to the top, <laughs> making them negative to positive. So, all right, another example. One half x squared times the square root of 16 minus x squared. Anybody have any idea why I'm showing you this one? It has a word. It has a because it's stupid. You're right, because it's stupid. I like to show you the stupid problems. No, uh, the reason that I'm showing you this one is because, yes, there's a one-half x squared in front of it. What do you have to do in a situation like this? Multiply it into the. Yes. Where are the different fractions? Oh, yes. Can't you just take away the square root and put 4 minus x? Um, no, you cannot do that. Because um, 4 minus x, if you were to square 4 minus x, you would get 16 minus 8x plus x squared. This is not what we have. We have 16 minus x squared. This right here, what you're thinking, 16 minus x squared, 16 minus x squared factors to 4 plus x, 4 minus x. These are not exactly the same. So when you take the square root of that, you just understand what I'm saying? Okay, if they were both plus x's, then the square root would be 4 plus x, or 4 minus x. You know what I mean? What does it help? Would you factor it in? Foil it in? This, nope, and you can't foil it in. You can't distribute it in because this is to the one half power that screws everything up. Okay, let me just cut to the chase here. This is what you need to do. We, if this was not to the one half power, let's just say it was just 16 minus x squared, we would have a polynomial times a polynomial, and you guys would use the product rule. So that's what we're going to do today. You have, Same situation, you're going to use the product rule because it's a polynomial, one half x squared is a polynomial, mm -hmm. times another polynomial. So the difference between what we were doing before and what we're doing now is that this is a product rule, but inside the product rule, we have a chain rule. Mm -hmm. So the, you're going to do exactly the same way. What is u? What is being raised to a power? 16, 16 minus x squared. So I'm going to do that first of all. 16 minus x squared 
The derivative of this, what is the derivative of 16 minus x squared? Negative 2x, very nice. All right, so that's going to be important. Now, when you, and by the way, there are some people in this room that do not know how to use the product rule yet. You have a test coming up, okay? I'm just going to say that. And I promise you the product rule will be all over that test. So you have to know. You have to figure that out between now and then. All right, so the derivative of this is going to be, <coughs> according to the product rule, you take the first polynomial, which is 1 half x squared. You don't change it. You just write it down. So you're going to have 1 half x squared. And you are going to multiply that by the derivative of this. And that's where the issue is, because you have a polynomial to a power. So what you need to do here is find the derivative of this. So what I'm going to do is do a whole bunch more scratch work over here on the right-hand side. <coughs> so, okay. What did you say? Don't you just that? Well, we set this stuff up as, though we, as part of the work that we would do to find the derivative. But we haven't actually found the derivative yet. Remember how you take the 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power? You rename f of x as being u to the 1 half power. And then the derivative of it is going to be the derivative of u to the 1 half power, which is 1 half u to the negative 1 half power. And you multiply that by the derivative of u. So this is equal to, I'm going to go back now and substitute in my u's. I have 1 half u is 16 minus x squared. And you multiply that by the derivative of u, which is negative 2 Yes. Okay. Let's say, let's say right now that this function right here was the only thing I, I told you. Find the derivative of this. If I told you to find the derivative of this, what would you do? Well, you would say, okay, well, u is 16 minus x squared, which we did. We said it was 16 minus x squared. We find the derivative of it. It's negative 2x. But when we, when the chain rule yesterday, when we were talking about the chain rule, you had to rewrite the function with a u. And so instead of writing 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power, you say u to the 1 half power. This is where the chain rule comes in. This part right here is the chain rule. The only difference between what I did yesterday and what I did today was that I used yesterday, I only did this stuff over on the side. And all of this stuff was in the problem because that was the only thing I was having you do was find the derivative of this. So we don't see your next to that. This right here. Well, I, I have to take this one step further. One half times negative two x is negative x times sixteen minus x squared. And that's the derivative. Negative one half power. rule yet. The product Gosh. rule now says that we have to add. add. So I'm going to add on to it the derivative. No, the, second. the derivative, well, the second polynomial. The second polynomial is 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power times the derivative 
of this. What is the derivative of 1 half x squared? It's only 1 x. It is 1 x. I'm just going to write x. Now I'm done, other than just cleaning it up a little bit. Guys, remember the first time you see something, you go, I don't know what she's talking about, then you see it again, you're like, okay, maybe. Can you say it one more time? Can you say it one more time? And I say it one more time. Okay, you know, don't, please, just be, just hang in there. It'll come to you. Maybe. <laughs> okay. One half x squared times negative x. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. That's one, that's actually negative one half x to the power of 3, and you multiply that by 16 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power, and then this stuff over here, you can't do anything with it. This quantity is put to a 1 half power, so I would just put the x out front, multiply that by 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power. There's one more thing I can do. Anybody know what it is? Yeah, I'll move it to the bottom. This, this is a situation like we had before. Remember just a little bit ago we had that eight-thirds situation? Mm -hmm. This really is the same thing as one x, negative one x cubed over two. So I'm going to move this 16 minus x squared to the negative one half power. I'm going to move it to the bottom and put it next to the two. So I'm going to end up with negative 1 over 2, actually I want negative 1x, over 2 times 16 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. I mean, the whole purpose that we did that was so that we could change it to a positive power, you guys. Plus, times 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power. Now, I could keep going with this, but we're not going to. What else can I do with this for those of you that love this stuff? What could I do? You could cry. Yes. Yeah, this would be, you were, someone was asking about this earlier. Who was it? Melissa. Kamari. Melissa. Melissa. This. Okay, by the way, this is the answer. You can be done. Is that at the top or the bottom? This one on the top and the bottom? The second one. The second one is just, it doesn't really have a top or a bottom. It's just there. Yeah. Yeah. But if you wanted to clean this up a little bit, you could put this over one. And then, or not. And then cross multiply and find your denominators. If you wanted to, I've said, you guys. I would completely accept this here. Now you were to keep going. Right. Wow. <laughs> you should give us extra credit. Maybe. Maybe extra credit. <laughs> All right. I have one more. No. Yes. I have one more. This is fun. Take a look at it. What do you think I'm going to talk about here? Oh, the quotient. The quotient rule. Oh. this time because you guys seem to, I, I seem to lose some of you, the last example that we did. Yeah. Look at this problem and tell me what are you going to apply the chain rule to? The top. So let's do the chain rule. Let's ignore this problem for a moment, go to the side, and we'll do the chain rule for just the top, okay? Okay. So u is equal to x squared plus 3. What's u prime? 2x. 2x. All right. Now, if you were, if this was the, if x squared plus three to the fourth power was the only thing I was asking you to find the derivative of, this is what you would do. You would say, okay, well, f of x is equal to rename it. Rename 
x squared plus 3 to the fourth power. Rename it as u to the fourth power. I have not found the derivative yet. I've just renamed it. The chain rule tells you to do what? Find the derivative of u4, u to the fourth power. That would be 4u cubed multiplied by u prime. So that would be equal to 4, what's u? x squared plus 3 to the third power times u prime, which is 2x. Clean it up. We can multiply the 4 and the 2x to get us 8x. Multiply that by x squared plus 3 to the power of 3. x squared plus 3 to the power of 3. This is the derivative of the numerator. The only, way, the only technique that you guys have to find the derivative of this is to use the chain rule. We applied the entire chain rule here. We came up with our derivative of 8x times x squared plus 3 to the third power. All right, ignore this for a minute now. Let's go back to the quotient rule. And the quotient rule tells us, for those of you that don't know the quotient rule, you need to, you need to learn it. That tells you to, the, the quotient rule, and you might want to make a note here that this is the quotient rule. The, the derivative is the denominator, very nice, 5x minus 2, times the derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of the numerator? 8x. What's this? So we're going to multiply that by 8x, x squared plus 3 to the power of 3 minus the numerator, which is x squared plus 3 to the power of 4 times the derivative of the denominator. What is the derivative of the denominator? 5. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to put a 5 here. You want to see? R divided by. R divided by. <laughs> Now I'm looking at this going, okay, where would I expect you guys to stop? And I would say, right there, right? Right? Um, I, would, I would say that I think it would be fair of me to expect that you guys would do 8x times 5x, 8x times negative 2. Okay, Mrs. Corner. Okay. Okay. Forty x squared, and then eight x times negative two would be negative sixteen x. I'm gonna put that in parentheses because we haven't multiplied that answer by x squared plus three to the power of three x. And I would say this: I certainly am not gonna expect that you're gonna take x squared plus three and put it to the fourth power. That would be silly. So I would say that I would just expect that you would bring the 5 out front, minus 5 times x squared plus 3 to the power of 4, all over 5x minus 2 to the power of 3. That would be what I would expect. And I think that's fair. That's nothing that you shouldn't know how to do anyway. Did it help when I did it yeah. over here separately? That's what I meant to do that for the first example. <laughs> do the chain rule on the side first. Do it all and then go back and try to apply it. How can we get burning to the top?